Hello, happy Wednesday. You know what time it is, and if you don't, I want to welcome you to your first episode of Weird DMs. This series is a collection of stories that are mostly uncomfortable, and unlike somewhere on the internet where you just read text and you're disconnected from that person, we like to put a face to the story just so we know that it's real. This series is all about real people with real stories, real uncomfortable stories. And today's stories are wildly uncomfortable, and they sound very dramatic as well. I mean, there's this kid, Aaron, who uh, sent us an email, and all he told us was he got impaled in the ass in front of 300 people. Uh, and then this kid, Peyton, he took a $12,000 slime. So I don't think I have to say much more uh, to sell you on how this episode is going to be pretty wild. <laughs> Before getting into a story about a $12,000 slime, you know what you have to do. You gotta thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is public.com. There's obviously been a lot of talk about investment in the last couple months, and if any of that has piqued your interest, public.com is a place where you can do that. It's an investing app where you can buy stocks, sell stocks, you can even follow investors. It's a cool place to start if you're just getting your feet wet with investment, mostly because you can follow and see other people's portfolios. You can follow a random user's portfolio, or you could even choose people like, I don't know, Philip DeFranco or even Shaq. So you could go to a party and you could tell someone, hey, you know me and Shaq are invested in the same company? And they'll look at you and say, what? Shaq? You're like, yeah, Shaq. We've got a similar portfolio. And they'll look back at you and say, how's that possible? And you look at them and you smile ear to ear and you go, that's easy, man. Public.com. The app is free. You can start with as little as $1. You can buy slices of stock so you don't have to get into a whole stock. You know, if you just want a little sliver of one, just a little piece of the pie, that's cool. And most importantly, Public does not sell your data or your information to third parties or other market makers, uh, which other investment apps do. So if you're curious about investment or you just want to see what Shaq is up to in the market, you can go to public.com slash Noel or download the Public app. And when you sign up, you'll get a free slice of a stock for free. It's free because I said it's free. Again, that's public.com slash Noel. Sign up and you'll get a free slice of a stock. Now it's time to get into these stories. All right, let's put the headphones on. Now, I don't particularly want to watch this video, but I do love this title, which is My Friend Did Meth Because She Didn't Want to Be Rude. All right, let's take the headphones off. And while that sounds funny, I think that's probably, you know, that's got to account for like 40% of meth stories. Because when you bring out meth, that's a vulnerable moment. You're telling someone, hey, I do this. Slush. And you're sitting back looking at them like, what? Well, I, I, I guess we do this. We do this now. And then they're sitting there holding it like, we do it? You're like, yeah, man. We do it. You know, and then the Disney Channel logo comes up. <laughs> All right, we're just going to start it off with this one titled Cat Ashes and Screamo. Hi, Noel. My name's Liz, and this is basically a story of one of many really weird Tinder dates that I went on when I was like 19 or 20. So I remember this guy's name was Joshua, and he was six feet tall, and he was a pool boy, and he lived in a town that was maybe like 40 or 45 minutes away from the town that I lived on. We like matched and like message back and forth. I gave him my number, I gave him my Snapchat, and we made plans to go to Sonic, like the drive-in. So he pulls up to my place, and we're like driving to Sonic, and he tells me that he wants to sing me a song. And I was like, okay, like, let's hear it, let's, let's see. And I was expecting some like, I don't know what I was expecting. A really dope front seat Honda Civic freestyle. That's what you were hoping for, one of those classics. You put a beat on and you say, <clears throat> I wrote this for my ex. Bitch, I loved you. But he turns his radio down and starts singing some like screamo, like, like, I'm not gonna try to do it because it's really weird. <laughs> some screamo song about. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what screamo is. Or is it like, <laughs> I don't. Oh, screamo. You mean corpse husband? <laughs> that visual is so funny sitting at a Sonic because don't they bring food out on rollerblades at some Sonics? You're just sitting there and this dude is just doing the. <laughs> got someone coming over bringing two blue slushies. <laughs> He's sitting there watching this bowl and looking back at the slushies coming. He's just <laughs> trying to tell the Sonic employee, don't. He doesn't need any more sugar. This fool is on meth. Some scream out song about Elizabeth and how beautiful I was. And I didn't know what to say, <laughs> so I said thank you. And I tried changing the subject, so I asked him if he had any pets. Oh. 
listen you're doing your best but damn i'm just picturing this moment where this dude in pure silence does the and as soon as he finishes someone says oh thanks do you have any pets i'd have to drive straight to a hospital and be like hey how do i get lobotomized before tomorrow told me like i love my cat so so much that after it died i had it cremated and that was all like normal to me i guess you know people get their pets cremated yeah sometimes people get their pets where they get it's like they're still alive but they're still yes yeah, like taxidermy some people do that some people even do that to their relatives he was gonna carry that cat with him forever and i was like what do you mean so he pops his truck and shows me like this little pet urn and he's like her ashes are in here like i'm gonna carry her everywhere i go and i was like oh cool <laughs> so i asked him to please take me home because i had work really early the next morning and he was visibly upset so we didn't get any sonic and we're driving to back to my place and he like, goes to the mcdonald's drive through and orders one sweet tea for himself <laughs> Nothing for me. He didn't say a single word to me the whole drive home. Yeah, what is wrong with you? You didn't like his screamo performance? You didn't like his dead cat ashes? I go into my place and I start like unmatching him and unfollowing him and everything. And I get a text message from him that says that he cannot believe that he drove an hour and a half round trip for some girl who wasn't going to put out. And I told him that I was really sorry that I didn't think I was a girl for him. And, you know, that I wish him love. Hey, man, I don't know what that guy thought. I don't even know if he if he even sees Tinder the way you see Tinder. I think this dude is a necromancer. You know, just approaching people, screaming at the, you know, probably incantations to muster people up from the dead and then demonstrating his cat ashes. There's no way he even views interacting with humans or, or romance the same way other people do. Let's get into this next story from Aaron, uh, who, you know, who looks like Jack Harlow. Go ahead. Go ahead, say it out loud. <laughs> I didn't know Jack. Get it off your chest. All right, good for you. Back with the penis. Now, this thumbnail, it just shows nothing but embarrassment. I mean, this dude is bright red. So I can only imagine how embarrassing this story is. And I can't wait. So, Aaron, take it away. What's up, Noel? So I have a story about my ass that I think you're going to like. Um... <laughs> Sussy baka. Back in high school, I did the school musicals, and my junior year of high school, we did one called Back to the 80s, and I was the villain, so at the end of the performance, my character was supposed to get knocked out and then dragged off the stage by two of the guys, like, you know, dragging me off. Dragging you off? I'm sorry, bro. This, this story is just... Continue. So during dress rehearsals, we had practiced it quite a few times. It worked out, you know, there wasn't any issues. But then during our actual final dress rehearsal, I was getting dragged, and, uh... A piece probably like this big of the stage, it splintered off and got itself lodged in my ass. And uh, I was a little concerned about it, so I brought it up to my teachers and they were just kind of like, you know, no worries, uh, probably won't happen again. You know what's hilarious is as a kid, you look to a teacher because they're an adult and you're like, they gotta know, right? And you don't realize that's not an adult. That's just a woman in her mid twenties who used to smoke weed and wanted to help the kids and now she wishes she could go back to weed because all these kids drive her crazy. That's, that's just a lady who used to smoke weed, you know, or if it's a science teacher, it's like someone who get, used to get their ass kicked, but they have no idea what to do about a splinter in a child's ass. During the second performance, which was the last one, so it was the last time I was ever gonna have to do this this musical, I was getting dragged off and uh, I, I suddenly got stopped and both the guys had like let go of me and I realized that I was like, stuck to the stage I guess and I tried to like pry myself off but I was like stuck and so I finally just like ripped myself off and uh you know when I when I had stopped I had noticed that there was you know something had happened down in, in my, my nether regions and uh I'm gonna let you finish man but why don't people just say ass or balls or what is this stupid thing my nether regions why do we use that that's the dumbest word for asshole or penis or ball sack or whatever and no one ever says nether regions without that smile like what what aaron just did you know it's my nether regions <laughs> my nether regions isn't the nether regions where they you know like make wooden shoes and windmills and stuff Damn, son. and so i like let out like uh <gasps> kind of thing. But I was in front of 300 people and I didn't want to make any noise or any 
you know, I didn't want to make a fuss about it. Right, yeah, yeah, no, it's like when someone presents you with meth. It's like, you don't want to be rude. You want to ruin the vibe. And so, you know, bleeding out of your nether regions. Then what happened? I, I just kind of, like, got myself off and walked off the stage. I didn't really know what was going on, but I could feel some, like, wood particles in my in my pants. So I went over to uh, one of the guys, and I was like, yo, can you, like, check out my what's going on down here? And he looks down, and he's fucking shocked. And he runs to go grab a teacher. I get rushed to the nurse's office. And the nurse and the teacher are in there just smoking a bowl, right? And they're like, oh. <laughs> what's <laughs> what's Oh shit! Flush. Holy fuck! He's fucking bleeding. Oh my god, that's so bad. Oh my god, I'm freaking out. Oh, you gotta do, you gotta deal with this one. My chest. <sighs> and one of the firefighters comes in and he he takes these clippers, or whatever, and he he cuts up the top of my pant, like from the bottom to the top of my pants, cuts them open. My ass is just splayed out in front of maybe five or six people in the nurse's office. And uh, the the guy comes over to me. He's like, you know, you, you gotta you gotta splinter in in your ass. And he was being very uh, methodical about how he approached telling me what was going on. Turns out, it was a 14 inch long piece of wood impaled in my ass cheek. I'm really trying to defend this story and keep all ounce of professionalism, man. But you're you're making it hard. <laughs> oh hell no, <nah. laughs> bro, you sus. And now I have a big ass scar. Pun intended. Back with the pain. So, yeah, that's my story. I ended up having to uh, carry a pillow around for like three or four weeks because I couldn't really sit properly. <laughs> Aaron, I, I like your game show announcer energy, man. My nether regions. Big ass scar. Pun intended. You should be doing commercials, man. You make a 14-inch wood splinter sound like buying a Toyota Corolla. It's impressive. That's a skill, man. It's, I don't even think you're aware that you have that skill. Now for this next one, I'm not even going to prep you. I just want you to experience this the way I read the title and I went, oh. I want you to have that feeling as well. So my dad keeps a journal on his laptop and um, about six months ago, he left it unlocked before he went to sleep and at the time, my parents were getting a divorce, and my mom was accusing him of having an affair, so I thought I'd read his journal and see if that was factual. Good on you. Getting the answers. Dad, who is she? Is she real? I thought I'd read his journal and see if that was factual. Instead, I found out that my uncle is my real dad, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. I have got to get back into Euphoria. I mean, this character, it's this is crazy. What a brutal storyline. <laughs> I'm gonna let her finish. Before this, we had done a 23andMe test, and apparently my dad used the DNA I provided for that to do a paternity test. And my uncle is my real father. Apparently, my mom slept with her sister's boyfriend, and I am the result of that. <laughs> And I still have not told either of my parents that I know this information. Well, I'm glad you decided to come out with it to a whole bunch of strangers you know, on this channel. We appreciate that. We appreciate you risking it all. That's so wild because the whole time you thought your dad was in the wrong. Turns out it was your mom or maybe both of them. All right, I don't even know how to introduce this next story, but we'll, we'll see what's up. So when I was 19, I matched with this guy on Tinder, and we decided to go see the newest Spider-Man movie. He said he could, would pick me up on his motorcycle, and I said, sure, I don't, I've never been on a motorcycle, whatever. And then he texted me that night saying, actually, I'm going to take my mom's car because I don't want to, like, run my, my motorcycle out of gas or something like that. I don't want to run my motorcycle out of gas. Man, just say you didn't get paid that week, man. Just tell the truth. It's always good to be honest. So he picks me up. We're having a, like a good conversation to the movie theater. We park. First of all, he lied to me about his height. Um, He was 5'5". Five five. I'm 5'9". Five I, I tried to look it over because I like talking to him. <laughs> Love your choice of words there. I tried to look it over. Hey, but you heard that though. He was short, but he had what? He's got the chat, mate. He's got proper batter. Batter can get you a long way. Doesn't make you six feet though. I had ginger hair, which is fine, but he had a ginger beard, wasn't feeling it. So I like was kind of going into it like, why is this guy lying to me? We get in the movie theater and he turns to me and goes, I left my wallet 
in my cash or my credit card in my motorcycle backpack? Do you think you can pay or do you think they accept Apple Pay? I was like, this mother thinks they're gonna let him pay through his iPhone. Does anyone feel like they're watching a monologue from Riverdale? I mean, this just, I don't know, it fits. It's just so much conviction when she speaks, man. You know, this motherfucker thinks they're gonna let him pay through an iPhone? Only TBS writers could come up with a line like that. It's just, just scream soap opera. I had to pay for the tickets. We couldn't get any popcorn or anything. We go to the back of the theater. I had brought my blanket with me and it was like the, it's those seats that are like love seats. So they're big cushiony seats. I'm laying there already pissed off and not feeling it. And I'm like, at least I get to see the new Spider-Man movie. But he was like insistent on cuddling and stuff, which whatever. Um, it's weird to cuddle a guy that's shorter than you. But anyway. Hey, 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 listen. Hey, hey, hey. I can't speak for him, but you know, the right short guy, sometimes we complete the puzzle, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. He started like going under the blanket and like touching on me. I was just paying attention to the movie. I couldn't say anything because I'm not a movie theater. So I like jerk away, stiff as a board with the blanket wrapped around me, like giving the nonverbals that I don't want to do whatever we're doing. And then he goes, I think I'm gonna go grab some water. This is like halfway through the movie. And I'm like, okay, knowing damn well he has nothing to pay for. So then five minutes go by and 10 minutes go by. And then like 15, and I'm like, this motherfucker's not coming back. And I remember I walked out of the theater and looked for him and he was gone. He was my ride home. So I had to go back in the movie theater and watch the rest of the movie and ended up calling my friend and begging him to pick me up from the movie theater because I just got abandoned by a fucking leprechaun. Uh -oh. Yo, that was the most fire monologue I've seen in a minute. I didn't even feel like I was watching a story. That felt like I was watching an audition. That was cold. That was, that was so good, bro. I was drawn into that. I cannot believe you went on a date with Rumpelstiltskin and then he took off on you. That's unfortunate. But I'm glad you didn't let it bruise your ego. You, you still, you radiate that confidence and that's awesome. Because you should never let... Oh, no wallet rumple stiltskin motherfucker make you feel bad about yourself. Well, like I said, today's stories were pretty wild, and I think they delivered. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thanks again, Public, for sponsoring this video. And I'll see you all next Wednesday. Have a good one. Bye. Hey, shit's play, man, I had to switch it up. Switch up, switch up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I might lose a few. Ask me if I give a fuck. Yeah, no.